Hi, everybody. I'm Leon Thomas here with Miranda Kitterlin Lynch, and you're here to watch another episode of Checking In, a Lodging DEI chat. Hi, Miranda. How are you? Hi, Leon. I'm great. How are you? All is groovy. Yeah, okay. everything is right on. Tell me about so, racquetball. Okay. All right. Well, since you asked, <laughs> since you asked, racquetball is good. You know, I had my my foot surgery a couple weeks ago. Yes. Um, almost a month now, right? Which you recorded. Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this is my first full week back on the court. And uh, some of the kids are taking advantage of it because they can beat the coach because I'm not moving at 100% right now. So they're loving it. One of them says they're going to make a video sometime in the next week. I'll show it if they do it. I'll show it. But we're talking racquetball. You can learn more about our racquetball program by going to racquetballrevival.com. Yeah, so we're and we're up to 70, 78 kids. Not too bad. Amazing. Amazing. Not too bad. We have to get you to somehow get you on the court. That's what we need to do. We got to figure out how to get you on the racquetball court in Baltimore. And we'll definitely eat a bean pie and maybe some other things too. Sure, I'll make a deal with you. Um, I'll play all the racquetball you want all day long, as long as you're going to watch my kids while I do it. <laughs> I'll put him on the court with me. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. We can make this work. It'll all be groovy. Miranda, you know, we, we have some signature questions at the end of the show. But someone yesterday who watched a recent episode told me that we also have a signature question at the beginning of, a sh of our show. I'm ready. And that signature question is... Miranda, what episode are we on? We are on episode 59. Episode. Not only are we on episode 59, we are in year two. We recently celebrated our anniversary of the podcast, and it's been so such a great experience. I can't wait to continue for more years to come. Yeah, it has been a, been a great time, and I appreciate you being my co-host and partner on this show. I really, really appreciate it. I agree. It has been just a, a lot of fun. And folks, if you would like to be on Checking In, a Lodging DEI chat, there's two ways to do it. You can contact me, Leon Thomas. You can email me at leon at the Leon Thomas group, or you can contact Miranda. And the easiest way to contact Miranda, to find out about Miranda, is just to Google her name, and you'll find her. Just Google Miranda Kitterlin Lynch. You're not going to find another one, and her email and all will pop up there. You can search for her, both of us on LinkedIn as well. We'd love to have you on the show. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and today we have Edie Lowe as our guest known her a while. We'll share some of those stories. Let's bring Edie on into the studio. Hi, Edie. How are you? Hi, I'm great today. So glad to be here with you. Great. It is good to have you with us. It's great that we have reconnected after, after so long. We used to kind of see each other on the road when I was working for Vista Host and you were doing sales training for our directors of sales and sales managers. It's good to connect with you again. It's great to connect with you. You know, this industry is really a small industry, even though there are over 50,000 hotels in the U.S., but it's amazing the number of people that I'll run back into that I met 20 or 30 years ago. So I really love it for that reason. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about you. What would you like the audience to know about you before we start the fun interrogation? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, let's do fun things. I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan, as you can tell from the red and black. Um, and I support all sports in the university. However, my 21-year-old daughter decided to go to Furman University. So we should all say our prayers and send best wishes and our money to that area of the country with the flooding and the devastation that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, you know, I work for a great company called Talos. And we sell autonomous vacuums to the industry. 
All right, right on. Oh, that's really cool. I was looking at your LinkedIn and wondering about your connection. I think I saw that you either were in the Atlanta area. So I hope that your loved ones, especially your daughter, I hope everybody's um, recovering as safely and quickly as possible. Well, thanks so much. Area, certainly. Um, so I'm so curious. So how you've known each other for a long time. I'd love to hear some of your war stories together. Um, well, of course, Leon was working for Vista Host. I was a road warrior at the time and I'm still a road warrior. And one of the fun stories was is we were both on an airport shuttle. I think coming out of BWI going to the hotel and I look over at him and he looks over at me. We know each other. <laughs> <laughs> and we dominated the conversation in the van for that entire 30 minutes back to the hotel. I think, didn't we Leon? Yeah, we did. We did. We just took it over. Yeah. No, but that, that's what we do. You know, yeah. we take over the conversation. It was real. It was really cool. But Miranda, the thing that I remember most about, about Edie, um, when I first got into management and uh, working as an assistant manager at the Hampton Inn at BWI Airport and then going into task force management, I would run into Edie at Vista Host Properties, Vista Host Hotels, and she was always so encouraging for me. Right. She would always say something kind about the work I was doing. I heard good things about you. I saw you do this. I heard you do this. I saw how you were training that that person at the front desk. And she was a sales trainer. So she's training our directors of sales and sales managers. And I looked up to her because I knew, number one, that Michael Harrell and Peter Burkhead, Michael Harrell was the chairman and president of Vista Host and Peter Burkhead was the senior vice president of sales. I knew that if they hired her as a contractor to work with our hotel, she knew what she was doing. So I respected her a great deal. And when she said, Leon, you're doing a good job. Yo, this is great. I love what you're doing. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So it 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 motivated me, right? But now I want let's let's really take a look, an honest look at this. Here's a, a young, well, younger black man, right, in, in hotel management that as I look around, I don't see any other black managers. And here's a white lady who says, you're doing a good job. That meant something to me. And I just thought, what if we all told others, you're doing a good job, the, the impact that would have. So yeah, so that's what that's what I really remember about you, Edie, was the, the positive reinforcement and encouragement that you gave me. Oh, well. Thanks. I mean, you know, you should never forget where you came from and those people who helped you climb the ladder because it all comes back around one day. So, you know, and it has, we're reconnected and look at what great things you're doing with racquetball and your 78 something kids. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I absolutely love that. I think that sometimes we don't realize the impact we have on people when we give those positive affirmations and support and even the smallest amount of uh, championing them. You know, I think, I think that's really amazing. So yeah. um, I love it. So tell me if you could, um, what, what has brought you to where you are in your career? And you don't feel like you have to give me a full, uh, play by play of your career path, because I know you have a wealth of amazing experience. Um, but what is it internally or by chance? How did you get here? What made you want to do this? What do you love about it? Oh, well, number one, I wanted to fly, but I didn't want to be a flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and I wanted to travel. I mean, I grew up on a dairy farm. I had never been on a plane until I was 25 years old. Uh, so, and I loved it. And back then travel was a lot more fun than it is today um, <laughs> or being on a plane, I should say. Um, but I just fell in love with this industry in college. I mean, I started working as a cocktail waitress and on a banquet team at two different hotels and just loved seeing new people come through the doors every day. And then the fact that, hey, they might come back uh, 30 days later for another visit and you'd connect and you know, just those connections you make in hospitality. If, if you really love hospitality, you don't mind working those long hours in hotels that you might have to work. And um, of course, I left hotels and then got into software, so a sales solution, and then went from there, um, worked a short stint 
for um, a PMS company. And then I went to work for a great company called Hotel Effectiveness and sold labor management. And when I started selling the labor management tool, I was selling to the same general managers that I was selling to when I was doing Hotel Sales Pro 100 years ago. And they were now CEOs and presidents and senior VPs of organizations. So I got to see them developed as, as well in the industry. So it's it's incestuous, I sometimes say, how small <laughs> this industry is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Leon? So, Edie, tell me changes that you've seen in the industry as it relates to all areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so often when we hear the term DEI, the thing that comes to most people's minds is race. But with your experience and how long you, you've worked in the industry and the many things that you've done, I'm sure you've seen more than just racial improvements. Tell us about every, tell us some of the things that you've noticed that are different about our industry and what are some of the challenges that are, that we still face? Well, still less than 10% of women are occupying the C-suite, uh, which I think is a shame because when I started out in the industry, women were in sales. We were rocking and rolling sales and you can't keep a hotel open if you don't have a good sales team. So women have always been strong in sales. Um, the immediate change after that, I began to see women move into general manager jobs and task force jobs and then get into corporate level jobs outside other jobs besides revenue jobs or maybe human resources. So if you go and look at various websites, I mean, there's a lot of women in those VP jobs um, in operations, as well as sales, as well as in revenue. We just need, and we're getting there in the C-suite. More and more women are moving into the C-suite or becoming presidents of corporations. Mm -hmm. Edie, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk some more about that after we go to a short commercial break. So we'll talk some more about that and... We also want to hear about what you're doing now with, with Talos. And you told me before the show, it's autonomous vacuum cleaners. But I want to tell you my vacuum cleaner story. Okay. And Miranda's like, he has a story about everything. <laughs> well, yes, I do. Yes. And I have a five-second version, a 10-second, a 15, an hour, a half hour, and a full-day keynote on them all, too. I've got it all. But we'll get to that in a minute after this short commercial break. Announcing the newest show from the Leon Thomas Group, Cooking with Kids in the Kitchen. Each week, we're going to have kids on the show in their home kitchen, showing us their culinary expertise right here on Cooking with Kids in the Kitchen. If you know of a kid that would be great to have on Cooking with Kids in the Kitchen, contact Leon Thomas with the Leon Thomas Group. His email address is leon at the Leon Thomas Group dot com. That's Leon at the Leon Thomas Group dot com. Cooking with kids in the kitchen. Baked by Brianna has been your Baltimore hometown bakery since 1969. Located in Roxton Plaza, Baked by Brianna. Visit bakedbybrianna.io. At Rides Car Repairs, we work on all cars, old cars, new cars, and your car. Car Repairs by Ride.io. Hi, it's Robin from LTG Radio reminding you that the holiday shopping season is just a few months away. But you don't have to wait until December to start your shopping. You can do it now by going to Why Wait Shop Now Got Biz. That's Why Wait Shop Now Got Biz. There's no need to wait. Go to why wait? Shop now. Dot biz. Start now on that Christmas shopping list. 
And now, back to more LTG Radio. Hey, welcome back to Checking In. I'm Leon Thomas with Miranda Kitterlin Lynch. We're the co host of Checking In and Lodging DEI Chat. Our guest today is Edie Lowe. The commercials you just saw are all examples of the work that the students and recent graduates of the Leon Thomas Group have worked on. So if you'd like, a short commercial, any type of advertising for your organization, let me know. Contact me directly, Leon, at the Leon Thomas Group, and we'll work on something really nice for you, too. One of the things we're most proud of at our organization is being able to provide opportunities for college students and recent grads, and that's just one way that we do it. Edie, before we took our break, you you mentioned that we need to have more women in in C suites, right? How do we do that? What's the what's the best way to to make that happen? And Miranda, what what's the best way? Edie, let's talk with you first about that. How do we make that happen? What do we need to do? We need to be more assertive as women. You know, we need to be asking for those jobs. Uh, we need to be making sure. I guess really what I should say is we don't need to be afraid to be smarter than our boss. We just no, need to tell our boss that we're smarter. Um, and smart bosses, smart executives hire people who are smarter than them. I mean, right? That makes only sense. You want everybody to make you look good. So I think that's where it really starts. Um, and you know, don't be afraid to ask for the job, number one. Yeah. Right. I think that's phenomenal. And it reminds me of what our most recent guest, Lisa Flicker, said. Um, don't be afraid to tell everybody why you're the best person for the job. Don't be afraid to tell everybody how smart you are. Um, so I, I think that that is just really reflective of what we hear from other amazing people in our industry. Um, and it also reminds me of one of my favorite quotes. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Right. So <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, I. I want to add to what you said. I absolutely agree um, with everything. And so I would just also add that maybe not just for women in the industry, but for everyone in our industry that has typically and traditionally been uh, very firm in the um, the shift hours that, that our uh, entry-level employees will work, for example. Um, they've been very firm on schedules. Um, I think that there is room now, especially after this pandemic that we've all experienced, to kind of redesign our work-life balance. I think that that's not only beneficial for females or or any caretaker, right, uh, in our industry in order to succeed in all areas of life, but I think it's an opportunity for a somewhat of a rebirth so that it's maybe a I guess that's just it, an easier industry to have balance in your life, whatever that looks like, if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah, totally agree. And I think as women, whether it's hospitality or whatever industry and you're in and you're married and you have children, you're caregiving for a lot of people, don't be afraid to look at him or your partner and say, hey, it's your turn to look after the kids. You know, we both work at home or we're both in offices. And it's, you know, you're in a marriage or in a relationship as equal partners. So you've got to share the caregiving equally as well. Hold, hold on. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, I have someone that wants to talk to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My husband is an awesome partner and a great father. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Um, wow. So, <laughs> so Edie, you, you mentioned that with Talos, you are you sell autonomous vacuum cleaners, right? And so we're gonna we're gonna talk some about that. But I promised the viewers and you that I would share my vacuum cleaner story. So here it goes. So in college, I needed money, right? And what's a college student need money for? Maybe tuition, nah, not that. I needed drinking money, right? I needed needed beer money, okay? <laughs> so I, I flipped through the newspaper, right? Flip, flip, flip. And there's a job that says management trainee. I'm like, ah, okay, I'll call. I go for the interview. They say, yes, you're hired. I go, what am I going to be doing? They say, you're going to sell Kirby sweepers. Kirby's, right? Y'all seen Kirby's before? Do you know about a, about a Kirby? 
right? This was way back when, and the Kirby was $999. And I'm like, nobody's going to buy these things. So they put us through the training, and they said, contact some people that you know, and this will be kind of your practice sales time, okay? So I show a couple people, go on a couple sales calls with some friends and so forth, and I hired students in the dorm to go through the phone book to call folks by zip code to set appointments up for me. And my first appointment was with a blind couple and I didn't know they were blind till I got there. I sold them a $999 Kirby sweeper and the $300 vac vacuum shampooer to go along with it. And I thought I was the man. And I got my $120 commission check, and I never sold another Kirby after that. That's my Kirby vacuum story. There you have it, folks. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's what I did. <laughs> These things are good. Kirby's are really good. I love them. But that's the end of my story. Let's hear about Talos. Tell me what, 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 what? Autonomous vacuum cleaners? Tell me how that works. Go ahead. Fill exactly. Me what is an autonomous vacuum cleaner? Because I think I'd like one. <laughs> well, um, it's a Roomba on steroids. So it's a robotic vacuum. You, everybody has one in their home. And why do we have one in their uh, our homes? Because we don't like vacuuming. And the same is true in the hospitality industry. Nobody likes vacuuming. And people are only vacuuming the trash they see on the floor. So the our vacuum, and we call it Rosie. Remember the Jetsons? My yeah. CEO and founder <laughs> was a big fan of the Jetsons. And uh, so it's real exciting. So I see it as a productivity tool. Drop the vacuum in the hallway and the house person can then go help strip rooms. And the vacuum will send you a text message when it's done with its job. So I think it's, you know, a very easy sell and something everybody should have because every hotel is still short staffed one or two in their housekeeping department. And don't you want to redirect labor to something that's more one on one with the guest and more eye catching. So I think it's I think every hotel should have at least one, if not five or six. Uh uh, again, Jeremy, um, can you, <laughs> if you're making our Christmas list, <laughs> our holiday gift list. <laughs> and and we're showing it right now. This is it in operation as we, as we speak there. We're, we're showing it on our, yeah. we have the, the website up. That's the front page of the website. Look at this. Yeah. What? Yeah. I love it. So it does edge cleaning along the wall. It runs like a vacuum cleaner. You set it down, press play, walk away, and it goes down the hall and turns around and comes back and picking up that small debris and pulling out that dirt out of the carpets that normally your upright vacuum is not getting because people only vacuum where they see debris. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh my wow. goodness. I love it. If you need somebody to test it out for domestic sales, I mean, yes, and <laughs> I'll put you on the list. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So how Edie, you've always been to me, what seems like on the cutting edge of technology, right? Cause I remember you were, I think hotel sales pro, right? Yes. And that was like, at the time, was like advanced stuff. Yeah. And now you, you, you're still relevant even now to doing autonomous vacuum cleaners. How, how do you keep yourself so in tune with everything that's hip and happening? How do you a do lot, A lot of luck. <laughs> no, I am constantly reading on LinkedIn and articles and and trying to get ahead of the curve um, with what, whatever product I'm selling or company I'm working with. And, you know, the hospitality industry, as you know, Leon, has always been slow to adopt technology. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, as you guys know. So robotics is coming. And a lot of people use the Butler robots during COVID times to deliver things to rooms. 
I just think this is just a much more powerful play. I mean, drop a couple of, vac of these in your banquet space and let the setup people go do something else. I mean, let's wow. get back to talking to our guest and doing eye level things that are important to our guest. Mm. Yeah, I like it. I like yeah. it. Absolutely. I hear from uh, people, especially my students, concerns that with increases in technology that we're going to see um, job opportunities diminish. And my reply to them has always been, we're not going to see them diminish per se in volume. We're, we're going to see changes, just like we may no longer see um, PBX operators, right? That doesn't mean that there are less jobs. That means that perhaps that job has changed to something else. Yeah. Um, and so when I see technology like this, I see opportunity to remove, I don't want to say it's menial labor, but labor that can be done by technology so that you free up your human capital to, to do things like guest facing uh, service provisions. So I, I, I'm a big fan. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I remember, I'm, I'm so old. I remember when we, fax machines came out and we all panicked. Nobody's going to travel to get a contract signed anymore. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know. Wow. You're going way back. But yes, I remember those conversations. That's right. Yeah. We all no, panicked. Hotels oh, are right. going to close because yeah. of fax machines. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but technology, yeah. as you said, only offers more opportunities. I mean, yeah. I, there will always be a need for people behind the front desk because mm -hmm. people still want to communicate. Yes, there are those who want to swiftly check in and use their app on the phone to go check, you, get into their rooms. But, you know, we're going to always need people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. We're showing again the Rosie from Talos. The website is talos.com. Is that is that correct, Edie? Correct. Wow. And if folks want to get in touch with you to talk about how we could help their hotel, they can contact you. What's your, your email address, please? E-D-I-E dot low, L-O-W-E at talos.com. Wow. This is, this is great stuff. I, I hope everybody contacts you. But you know what I really like is... You didn't just say it's a cool tool. You talked about how it could help the hotel, right? Drop it down, let it do its thing, and the houseman goes and does this, or we go and talk, or have the banquet team do, right? Yeah. It just wasn't, yeah, let's put it down, let it go, watch the ball game, right? It, it was really, really cool. I like it. Yeah. Miranda, it's time. I'm ready. Edie, it's time. Grab a pen. And what I want you to do is just pretend you're giving us your signature because it's time for the two signature questions of the show. Miranda, before the show, when we were in pre-show conversations, we found out that Edie watches our show. Well, why wouldn't she? I can't. I don't understand why the world's not watching either, right? I just don't understand. But we said, you know, we're going to go to the two signature questions of the show, actually three. And she said, oh, I already know what they are. Hey, really? What are they? Do you eat bean pie? You ever had bean pie? <laughs> Like, yeah, that's one of them. And she goes, well, what would you do? What would you tell your 20-year-old self? Like, yeah, yeah. But there is another one. But I want to hear your answer to this one, though. First, have you ever had bean pie? No, I have not. Have you ever had tomato pie? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I make a mean one, Leon. You're invited to come to my house. <laughs> so to, would it tomato pie? Okay, let me just tell you, when he brought this fictional bean pie business to me, I said, I've had a tomato pie, I've had a crawfish pie, I've had a meat pie. There, no, there is no bean pie. They, <laughs> and they then sell he, them at Safeway. Videos. 
I looked, I, I looked up a recipe. It's made the same way as pumpkin pie and sweet potato pie. There you go. Fake news. There you go. <laughs> She's still calling it fake news. I sent I sent Miranda Miranda I sent you images from Safeway, from the Towson Safeway where they have bean pie in the bakery department. And Edie, she's still not going for it. You can do great things with artificial intelligence. Yes, I am. When I do that, I am not buying a bean pie. <laughs> and not only that, Miranda, on our last show with Lisa Flicker. You even know where to buy them if you're not in Safeway. <laughs> she goes, <laughs> the Nation of Islam sells them in many cities on corners. Okay, in my defense, if someone tells you something a thousand times, you start to think it and repeat it. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. How about a Maryland crab cake? You ever had a Maryland crab cake? Of course, and they're wonderful. Now, where did you get a Maryland crab cake? Oh, Leon, the restaurant, one of the first ones was down the street from your hotel. Uh, and I can't G &Ms. remember. G&M's. You were at G&M's. Yes. Yes, G&M's. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Miranda, these crab cakes are like this big. Delicious. Folks used to come to the front desk. Where should I go eat? Yeah, make a left out of the parking lot, left at the first traffic light, going out about three miles. You're going to go through wooded area. Think we sent you the wrong way. Then this place called GNMs is going to show up on your left. Go there, get crab cake. Thanks. See you when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really, really good stuff. All right, I, so go I ahead. Think it was, I think it was at your hotel after that they sent me there that I said from now on when I ask, where do I go eat at the front desk? And they give me a place that you know I make and eat at at home. I'm going to look at him and say, no, where would you take your grandmother to eat? And I right. started doing that and started eating at some great local restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Where would you, where would you take your grandmother? I like it. I like it. So um, I'll round us out with our final signature question, which you already know what it is, but I'm going to ask it. If you could go back in time and tell your 20 year old self one piece of advice, affirmation, pearl of wisdom, what would it be? Breathe and count to 10 before making rash decisions because it's gonna change the decisions you make. That is great advice. That could have saved me a first marriage. <laughs> Oh, oh my. Just simple pieces of advice. It's, you know, don't sweat the big stuff is really what I'm saying, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Especially for um it, and this is not a blanket statement, but I find among many of my female friends, colleagues and associates, we tend to take on so much emotional labor as well as task, if you will. Uh, not that our male and other counterparts don't take on a lot, but I feel that we take on so many things uh, that we oftentimes don't allow ourselves an opportunity to stop and take a breath. So that's wonderful advice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Edie, for being here on Checking In. It's been great catching up with you. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you all for having me. Great seeing you all. Thanks. Thanks again. Wow. Miranda, Edie. Great, great guest, great conversation. And how about the the autonomous vacuum cleaner? Uh, listen, if I don't get a bean pie in an autonomous vacuum cleaner <laughs> under our holiday tree this year, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you know, for for our pod and podversary, I should have mailed you a bean pie. I'd rather have the vacuum. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Now, oh, now the price tag just went up now. See? But oh. man, let me tell you why I'm worth it. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm the best person for that vacuum cleaner. Yes, from, from Lisa Flicker. Yes, we're combining the, the, the messaging in each show now. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I like it. Well, I can't wait to check out, check more into this. Our autonomous vacuum cleaner. That was really great, but it was great catching up with with Edie. And again, she was such a big supporter of of me, um, and just gave me just constant encouragement. Um, 
when I was coming up in management at Vista Host. So I, I appreciate her being on the being on the show. Thank you so That's much, great. Edie, for being here. Folks, you can listen to checking in a lodging DEI chat. You can listen to the the podcast if you just search for checking in a lodging DEI chat wherever you listen to your podcast. We're there. We're there. So we want you to do that. You can also check us out on LinkedIn and uh, on YouTube, you can see past episodes there. And Miranda, let's not forget the Leon Thomas Radio Network. Go to the leonthomasgroup.com, click on where it says listen live. You'll hear episodes of this show and all the others that the Leon Thomas Group produces. Yeah. R Miranda, thanks again for another great show. I really enjoy thank you. working with you. Thank you so much. And folks, thank you for watching, checking in, a lodging DEI chat. We'll see you next time.